Who are you? Hey Net Church, Pastor Dan here, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Before we get started today, I just quickly wanted to, I guess, give a little bit of a, uh, an insight into the heart of Net Church and what we're all about. So, one thing you may have seen on maybe some of our social media things or on our website is that along with the term Net Church goes a little catchphrase, which is something like this anyone, anywhere, anytime. Now, I just wanted to go through what that means. I mean, it's, it seems fairly self explanatory, but just the heart behind what that catchphrase means anyone, anywhere, anytime. Net Church is truly for anyone. Like it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter your background, your history, where you are right now in life or physical location, it's for you. Net Church is honestly for anyone. And it's anywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are right now, it doesn't matter if you're doing the dishes or if you're relaxing on the sofa or if you're, it's, you know, you're lying in bed on a Saturday morning, whatever, wherever you are, it's for anywhere. Um, you know, a lot of folks can't make it to church for whatever reason, maybe they work, uh, you know, shift work on a uh, on a Sunday morning or they're unwell or maybe you're in a nursing home or whatever it doesn't matter what the reason is it's anywhere wherever you are you can join in and watch Net Church and participate in Net Church and along with that I sort of led into this in, in the last point any time it doesn't matter what time of the week that you have free it could be a, a Monday morning or it could be a, a Friday midday, you know, it might be at lunchtime at your work. Any time that you have a spare little bit of time, you can join in and watch Net Church. You can comment, you can contact us. Uh, we're always there to, to listen and respond and converse and pray together and support each other, whatever it is anyone anywhere anytime that's what it means for us here at net church and what it means for you at home or wherever you are to be able to participate net church is designed solely with you in mind so i hope you enjoy the service uh, looking forward to continuing communication with you feel free to reach out you can look on our website for multiple ways of doing that so thank you again for joining us and let's get into some worship. Through trouble. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by Your presence, There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are well. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. It's all about your presence, Lord. Come fill us, come fill us afresh.
As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know. Hey Net Church, Pastor Dan here. Really glad that you could join us again. I'm going to bring a short message today on being a productive producer. Now, what does that mean? That's a really good question, and that's what we're going to go into today. 
Um, but to start off with, I wanted to establish three main elements that we're going to be talking about today, which are types of our personality and our environment. So I'm going to be talking about the earth, seeds, and growth. So let's start off by talking about producing. In the New Testament, it mentions the word produce 26 times. 17 of those times, when it talks about producing, it's talking about crops or fruit. So let's get back to the beginning there, that earth. Earth is a metaphor, or it means our lives. So the earth is like our lives. It's the environment that we have control over, our surroundings. The seed is a metaphor, or it means the things that grow in our lives. Uh, sometimes good, and sometimes not quite so good, unfortunately. Now, let's take a moment to read in the word what it says about seed and growth. So we're going to turn to Mark chapter 4 verses 1 to 8. And it's the parable of the sower. Some of you may know this parable quite well and others this might be the first time you've ever heard it. So let's go through Mark 1, Mark 4, 1 to 8. The parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Now, when he was telling this story or this parable, there were a, obviously the context uh, in that part of the world at that time meant a lot to those folks because there was a lot of farmers that, that lived in that area. That was the means of livelihood for many folks in that area at that time. Yet the analogy of likening that to the Word of God and how it is sown escaped a lot of people. Uh, it just right over their heads. They had no idea what Jesus was really talking about. And even the disciples themselves were not quite sure exactly what it meant. So in the next few verses, it goes into saying uh, how the disciples were asking Jesus what, what that all meant. <clears throat> and so eventually, a few verses down in Mark 4, verses 14 to 20, Jesus explains and enlightens the disciples on what that parable meant. So let's read Mark 4, 14 to 20. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. That's like the birds on the path that just came and snatched the seed away before it even had time to put down roots or grow. So Satan comes and takes the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. Great, this is awesome news. 
But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. That was where Jesus was talking about the sun coming and scorching it. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. And finally, others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop 30, 60 or even a hundred times what was sown. So what can we learn from this passage of scripture? What I take away from it is when seed is planted in the right conditions, it grows. So obviously that's the goal. We want our seed to grow. So what are the right conditions in our lives? that will allow good seed to grow and on the other side cause bad seed to wither and die. So obviously, like I said, our goal is to produce the good and continue that and uproot and get rid of the bad stuff. So what is it that we produce? Well, first of all, not all plants and trees produce fruit or food. But one thing all plants and trees do is that they reproduce, whether it be pineapples or prickles, or bananas or briars. The fruit or food produced in us is a metaphor, or it means the things that give life, the things that build up, encourage, strengthen both yourself and other people around you. They are really the, the fruits of the Spirit. The Bible always speaks of you and I as a fruit tree or a plant that produces some kind of food that's edifying, that's building people up, that's helping to sustain them. The cool thing about these trees and plants that produce food is not only do they produce food, but they also produce more seeds for more growth. In most cases, the number of seeds that comes off of a fruit tree far outweighs the number of fruit that's produced on that tree. Here's an example. In one singular orange seed, when planted in the ground in the right conditions, produces an orange tree. Now, over the course of that orange tree's life, it produces, who knows, how many oranges? A lot. Now, that one tree, let's say that in, let's just say in one season, in one given harvesting season, it produces 40 oranges. In that one tree, is this many oranges and in that many oranges there's this many seeds <laughs> and in that many seeds it produces a whole bunch more trees and it can produce a whole orchard or a whole orange grove and it just keeps going it exponentially increases that's the cycle of growth now to hear a message on new growth where I talk more in depth on how to cultivate and bring about new growth, there's a link right here in the video, I'll put it right here, that I recorded for Parkway Church that covers that in a lot more detail. So please do go and check that out. It's a great message. So let's get back to talking about what is God producing in you? Are you a coconut? Or are you a cucumber? Are you a potato or are you a plantain? Obviously, we're not literally fruits, but what I mean is, what is the gifting or talent that God has placed in you that he is cultivating and bringing out in you? Sometimes we find it hard to see in ourselves what those giftings are. 
and those talents are because let's be honest a lot of the time we're our own harshest critic we we tell ourselves that we're no good at things or that other people are better than we are um, if, if you're not sure what your gifting or your talent is what I would encourage you to do is go to God ask God what that gifting is what your talent is and if you're finding it hard to hear God's voice and to discover what that is ask trusted friends listen to what they are saying about you and start somewhere many of us including myself have been there what what does God say about you what does God say about me sometimes he's using those people around us those good friends around you to deliver his message of encouragement to you so he, here's the story about how I personally got started in the ministry area of worship it was an ongoing process in producing new fruit uh, so I, I first started uh, my, my first musical experience I guess you could say was when I was about uh, eight years old I guess maybe seven or eight years old my parents uh, were gifted a piano but it wasn't just any piano it was a uh, some of you may know of this particular kind of piano called a pianola and it would uh, it would actually in some respects play itself you would load uh, a special type of music roll into the piano you would pump some pedals and the, the drum would spin and it would the piano would play you could also play it manually as well that was my first experience of music my parents then traded that in for an organ and put me into organ lessons oh, I loved organ lessons so not much I absolutely hated it <laughs> I, I think I learned organ uh, for about a year a uh, year's worth of lessons and my highest achievement in uh, in in, uh, in learning the organ in my class was that uh, at the year-end uh, assessments I came third and I got a little trophy for coming third uh, I won't mention to you that in my group of uh, other folks that were being taught in that group uh, there was four people um, but hey I didn't come fourth I, I came third out of four um, so that went for a little while and then I sort of you know laid music down for a while it just was not really uh, a high priority in my life I guess at the time and so I, uh, I, I let that that gifting um, if you could call it that when I was playing the organ I know how to play jingle bells and that's about it um, I laid that down for a while until I was uh, 11 years old when my parents bought me an acoustic guitar now I started playing acoustic guitar and getting lessons and it took a while it took a lot of practice but I started to get good at the guitar I you know started to learn the basics of all of the chords and all of the you know the ryth rhythmic patterns that, that go into playing an acoustic guitar and I started to get uh, sort of mediocre at it and at that time um, about one or two years after I'd started learning the guitar I was asked to join the worship team and uh, you know play my three chords that, that I knew uh, in, in church so I did that and I played guitar for probably a year or two uh, in the worship team and then there was this desire to expand our uh, our music team to different instruments um, we already had a keyboard player a drummer a guitarist and the uh, thought was well you know what there's this great instrument it's called the bass guitar why don't we get Daniel to uh, to see if he can play bass guitar so uh, a wonderful um, friend in the church uh, an older fellow he had a bass guitar that wasn't really getting much use and so he lent his bass guitar to me and I started learning the bass guitar and again 
you know, over time and with a lot of practice, I started to get better at that. From there, I, that was sort of my main instrument for for many many years. I played bass guitar in church, uh, and then I expanded that into singing. Um, it took singing lessons and and started to get better at that as well. Um, so let let's go back to the beginning of the story. Here's the question: Was I amazing at the organ as soon as I played my first note on it? Absolutely not. But as I continued learning the technical aspect of music and also, and I have to stress this more importantly, the spiritual side of ministry and the anointing, I found that it was something that God was producing in me. It was this musical gifting and talent that he'd placed in me. Now, if I'd never gotten out there, if I'd never picked up a guitar, if I'd never played a note on the organ, I never would have known. So all of that to say is that you have to do something. You have to try something to see where that's going to lead you. Is it a gifting? Is it a talent that God's placed in you that God wants to grow and cultivate in you? I personally have now been able to encourage that musical gifting in literally hundreds, if not thousands of worshippers around the world. I've been to multiple continents, spoken at multiple conferences, uh, specifically around worship and ministry and the anointing. Now those people that I've spoken to and hopefully impacted will go and do likewise. They in turn will do the same. And that is how growth works. That's how that seed, that cultivation works. It's like the orange tree, you know, I'm, I'm the one seed uh, and now I've talked to all of the oranges uh, on the tree and now they're going to produce seed and do the same to other folks and encourage other people in the worship ministry. I want to quickly share with you a revelation I had many years ago about Psalm 37 verse 4. Some of you will probably know this verse. Uh, you may not know just from the reference what it is, but when I say it, you'll probably go, oh yeah, I remember that one. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. For the longest time, honestly, I thought if I delight in the Lord, He's going to help me to win the lottery. Not That wasn't literally my thought. But whatever my heart desired, God would give me. That was my take on this verse. If I delight myself in the Lord, He's going to give me you know, the Ferrari that I've always wanted, or the Lamborghini, or the Jet, or the Rolex, or whatever. Okay? <laughs> whatever it was that, was that my heart desired, in a natural sense, that God would give me simply because I delighted in him. God shifted my thinking on this verse. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, as you des delight yourself in the Lord, your heart becomes aligned with God's will. And as your heart becomes aligned with God's will, your desires become God's desires. Or other in another way of saying it, God's desires become our desires because we're aligned. We're delighting ourselves in the Lord, so we want what He wants. And He's giving you those desires for you specifically. Did I want to learn the organ? Not particularly. Did I want to learn the guitar? It wasn't something that was high on my priority list. But as God worked on me and I delighted myself in the Lord, that desire to learn guitar and become involved in worship ministry and chase after the anointing in that area became very strong. And it was God that gave me that desire as I continued to delight myself in him. So let me say it again. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. God has already put the seeds inside of you. We just have to place ourselves in the right environment to see abundant growth. If you would like prayer for direction 
and clarity in producing fruit in your life? Or if you would like prayer to create the right environment to cause the seeds in your life to start growing, such as allowing Jesus maybe to help with the gardening and pulling out the weeds, then please, by all means, do reach out to us through our website, which is at netchurchglobal.com. On the website, you'll also find many ways to contact us, and we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible to pray with you. You can also head to our website to find out more about us, including our live Zoom connects, who we are, and how to give. So thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to chatting with you. Amen.